thought I'd record this again, so hopefully it'll go right this time. Um, we're starting into Unit 1 right now. So on the green page, it has all the checklists of all the things we're going to learn in this unit. So as you, I've got this, you can put a check mark. I got this, do a check mark. Um, no, it's not going to let me go forward there. That's not good. All right, so I might be doing it from over here and back here. So. First thing we're going to talk about is scientific notation. How many are familiar with scientific notation? Raise a hand. Awesome, at least a couple. Okay, if not, we're going to be talking about it today. It's when things are really, really big or really, really small, and we don't want to worry about all the zeros and getting them in the wrong place. So instead of writing all those zeros, we use what's called scientific notation. And up here on the left-hand side, you can see there's a coefficient times 10, which is the base unit, to an exponent. If the exponent is positive, it's a really big number. If the exponent is negative, it's a really small number. So when I'm dealing with big numbers, what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to make it so there's only one digit in front of the decimal. So this number right here I would want to write as 2.5 and then I would do the times and then I count. The decimal is right here right now. I need to count 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine places I need to move it. So I go 10 to the ninth power. Okay? This is a really small number, but I want to make the decimal go right here, right? So the number that I would write would be 5.79. I would do the times, and then I move the decimal one, two, three, four, five. This time, since it's a very small number, I use a negative to say it's small, and I put the 5 there. Okay? So this is how we write things in scientific notation. Let's see if they'll let me move it forward now. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, so really how, this is wonderful, it's not going to erase it. Really helpful hint then. If the number is positive, you're making a bigger number. Now, the only difference is if it's a zero. That's like timesing it by one. 10 to the zero power is always just one. So if this was 10 to the zero power, it would just be 6.2. So anytime it's a number higher than zero, we're moving the decimal to make the number bigger. Okay? So we're moving the decimal to the right. If the number is negative, that mean, means I'm making a smaller number, so I need to move the decimal to the left. Does that make sense? Okay, going forward. So here is a big number and a small number. We're going to see if we can really quickly do what we need to to figure out what that scientific notation is. Now remembering the rule, we want one digit in front, so I want the decimal to go right there on that one. So the number that I'm going to write before is 5.907. Then I'm going to times it by some number. Well. Even though the decimal's not shown, it's right here. I'm going to move that until it gets to that arrow. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to times it by 10 to the 8th. Okay? On this one, I want to move it so the decimal's right here. Again, one number before the decimal. Or one number before, um, yeah, the decimal. So I'm going to put 6.5. Again, I'm going to move this decimal till it's right there. So one, two, three, four. But what do I put to tell it's a small number? Yes. Right, I put a negative there. So times 10 to the negative 4. Everybody getting this? Okay, good. All right, so I want you to try on your paper. You've got four things. Try to write down the right scientific notation for it. I'll give you a few seconds here. Not going to give you very long. It says in your paper, so you're writing all this, these notes down in your green paper because we're going to upload them and you get credit for it. Yes, sir. Uh, where are those pictures at? As you came in. Major issues, but I'll talk to you later. Okay. YouTube has not been. They can't access what I've put up on Canvas. That's a big issue for me, so. Yeah, I'll give them Thank you. Okay, we ready? You got those four? Did you have enough time? If you've got enough time, look at me so I know that you're ready. A few more eyes I'm waiting for. 
Okay, when you're ready, look up and see if you got them right. If there's any you have questions on, we can go back and look at them. Is there any that you don't understand or you got wrong and you'd like to see how to do it, like I was doing the others? So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here, one, two, three, four, negative. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative. Remember, it has to have one number before. And here, one, two, three, four, positive. Are we okay? Understand? Thumbs up, I got it. I'm, I'm acing this, thumbs down. I'm, I'm so lost, I don't even know what's going on. Thumbs sideways, yeah, sort of. I see some thumbs. Commit. You can do it. Okay, going forward. So let's talk about the differences in, and the similarities. So similarities between the big numbers and the small numbers is we're going to have one digit before the decimal all the time. So I want to move that decimal till there's one digit before it. The second thing I'm going to have in common is it's going to be times 10 to the power. Right? What's different? Who can tell me what the difference is between a big number and a small number? How do I know if it's a big number or a small number? Negative Good. Negative or positive. So it is the exponent. If it's positive, it's big. If it's negative, it's small. Okay. So we need to put those similarities and differences down. Now you don't have to use my exact word. You, can, you need to get that down. Now. Normally, I'm hoping they'll get this fixed. You will be going through this at your own speed, and I'll be talking through this online with you. And then when you come to the red part, we can answer any questions. All right, so now we need to go backwards. Okay, so we need to be able to go backwards. Given a scientific notation, we need to go, be able to go backwards to what we call standard notation. Okay. Um, so... Help me, what does the negative mean? Is it, am I going to make a bigger number or a smaller number? Smaller number. So which way am I going to move the decimal? To the right or to the left? Left. Good. So if I'm moving it to the left, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And in those places, I need to put zeros, right? So we should end up with this number. Now notice I put a zero before the decimal. So when you're working with really small numbers, you do want to put a zero before the decimal because a lot of times your decimal is so light I won't be able to see it. But if there's another zero there, I know that's supposed to be a zero. Okay, what about positive? Which way am I moving it? Right or left? Right. I'm going to make it bigger, so I'm going to move that way. So if I move that way, I have one here. How many zeros am I going to have? Six. Good. So I should end up with this number. Okay, going forward, here's practice. I want you to try and do that. Take a minute and do that. Okay, look up when you're done and let's see if we can get this right. Somebody's got music on. <laughs> Sorry. Not while we're, we're talking if you can. Uh, whatever. All right, let's see how you did. Anyone that you are questioning that you don't understand what went wrong. Check and double check. We okay? Thumbs up, I got it right. Thumbs down, I did. Thumbs sideways, I... Okay, we got thumbs up. That's awesome. Okay, so in this class, we're not going to use the English system. We're going to use the metric system. So turn in your feet and let's grab our meters and get going. Okay? 
Um, we're going to use the System International, which is the SI system. We're going to be using units in grams for mass, meter for length, liter for volume, Kelvin for temperature or Celsius for, for temperature. We'll also like to read it in Celsius, but there's a unit where we work with gases. We have to put it in Kelvin because of the equations. And then atmospheres for pressure. So we need to be able to go back and forth. These are four-letter words in chemistry, and we don't use them. Um, and we never say the big F, Fahrenheit, because that's really bad. We'll use degrees C. Keep it clean. Okay. Um, the ones that we're going to be using the most are kilo, centi, milli. We get to micro and nano some, but those are the three we're going to use the most. So if you're looking to convert between kilometer and the base unit, whatever it is, kilo one like say kilogram, we'll use grams here, here is equal to 1,000 of the gram or the, or the base unit, okay? So it's the bigger unit. So I could have put kilometer, kilo, whatever. If I'm looking at centi, I'm going, the centi is smaller than whatever's here, so I'm going to use meter. So for one meter, there are 100 centimeters. For milli, for one meter, there are 1,000 millimeters. Okay? So these are conversions we're going to be using a lot. And if you know those three, and it doesn't matter if it's meters or liters or, or grams, it will be the same. Okay? So having said that, I know a lot of you have used the metric system, and you've just moved the decimal. Well, we're going to use the metric because you should know it a little bit to teach you what's called dimensional analysis or factor labeling. It's way, the way we keep track of units in chemistry. And we're going to start easy with just one conversion. And you guys are going to say, I can just move the decimal. I want you to work with the units. Okay, because we're going to do some later that are many conversions long and you have to keep track of your units. So I want you to get used to it. Okay. So, first of all, we need to know the shortcut version because we don't want to have to write meter, millimeter, all that. So, meter is a lowercase m. Now, there's lots of m's in chemistry, so you do have to distinguish. It's a lowercase m. Centimeter would be cm. Milli, anything, meter is a lowercase m, meter is m. Milliliter, liter is actually a capital M, so m, l. You'll see me do this a lot where it's a, a cursive L because sometimes I look at my L's and I think they're twos. So whatever works for you. But it is a, a capital L. Kilogram is a lowercase k and a g. And milliseconds is a lowercase m with an s. So you can sort of see some of the units that we would be using. All right, so there's a lot of ways that you can remember how, what order they go in. There's a lot of mnemonics. Um, kittens hate dogs because they can't meow. Kangaroos hop down my driveway at Christmas morning. Kings hate dragons because dragons can't make money. King Henry died bloated drinking chocolate milk. And kangaroos hop down mountains drinking chocolate milk. And I couldn't find a good picture of mountain or whatever. Okay, so this is what dimensional analysis is. Instead of using um, divide and all that kind of stuff, we use a vertical line and a horizontal line. The vertical line means multiply because we're going to have x's and unknowns and stuff like that, so we don't want to use x's multiply. So a vertical line means multiply. A horizontal line means divide. Okay, and that's down at the bottom in the box that you can fill in. So we're going to convert, we're going to do an example here, convert 100 centimeters to 1 meter. Well, I know from that first page we just did, whoops, let's give you a little bit more, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Well, I could just right now say, well, duh, it's one meter, right? But I want you to set it up because I know I should get one meter. So in the dimensional analysis, I want to start with whatever I'm given, and underneath I don't usually put anything unless it's like a speed, like meters per second, then I would put second on the bottom. But I want to get rid of the centimeters. So I look at my conversion at the top and say, OK, which one deals with centimeters? This one does. So I'm going to put that 100 centimeters on the bottom. I've done with that. Now I have to use the other part, because I'm basically like timesing it by one. 
Okay, so on the top I'm going to put one, centi one meter. That way my centimeters cancel. Okay, then I just times through. 100 times 1 is 100. Divided by 100 is... Oh, and I'm just going to put them in again, sorry. One meter. Let me erase that so you can see it again. I forgot that I did it in already there. Okay, so we've got a couple to next to the, on the next page that you're actually going to write down. So let's take this convert 18 liters to milliliters. I'm going to do one with you again, and let's see if we can work on this. So for this one, we're going to need to know that in one liter, there is how many milliliters? Thousand, good. There's a thousand milliliters. So if I know that, then I can put in the 18, milli 18 liters to start with, set up my dimensional analysis. I want to get rid of liters, so it's got to go on the bottom, right? So I'm going to put that one liter on the bottom. That's going to bring everything else in. And I'm going to put the 1,000 milliliters on the top. That way I can cancel out the liters. I can cancel out the liters. Then I just go 18 times 1,000, and I get 18,000 milliliters. But because of scientific notation, anything that's bigger than 1,000 or less than 1,000th, I put in scientific notation. So what would this be in scientific notation? I've got to move it so that the decimal's right after the 1, right? So it's going to be 1.8 times 10 to what? Fourth, good. So I'm going to put that as my answer, because I would then move that decimal right here, one, two, three, four. OK? So go ahead and take a minute. I'm going to, um, let's go grab the um, conversions that we need. So this one's milligrams to grams. Which one's smaller, milligrams or grams? Milligrams. So I'm going to have one gram is equal to how many milligrams? 1,000. OK, up here. I've got milliliters to liters. Which one's bigger? Liters. So I'm going to go one liter is equal to how many milliliters? Milli means what? Thousand. So you're going to have a thousand. And what about this one? Grams to kilograms. Which one's bigger? Grams or kilograms? Kilograms. So in one kilogram, how many grams? Thousand. It's thousand grams. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. Kilo means a thousand of something. Okay, milli means a thousandth. Okay? All right, so take a second. I want you to see if you can set it up, and then we'll do it together real fast. If you get done with that and you're understanding, go ahead and go on to independent practice. And I'll put these up slowly, so if you're stuck, you don't just sit there and, and worry. I'll put these up slowly, and this is a, oops, I forgot to fix. That should be milligrams, not centimeters. And I do have calculators up here. You can use your phones for your calculations. You just won't get to use your phones on the tests. OK, I'm going to wander. If you need extra help, let me know. I'm going to turn the, the mic off for a sec.
Okay, so if you're not finished, that's okay. I've got the answers up here on the board for you. What you need to do then is finish your independent practice. Then you're going to take a picture of all the notes that we did today, and you're going to upload it to Daily Work 1.1. Okay, then you're going to take independent quiz, and these are on the board, independent quiz, work quiz one, and it will, once you're done with that, you've got to make sure you scroll to the bottom, and it'll say next, and it will give you an assignment. Okay, so we're going to all work on that for just a few seconds, and then blue, what I'd like you to do is go out to my DSD and take your safety test. Green, work on your independent practice. Red, you're going to work on your independent practice and any questions you have. And then we'll rotate. We won't have a lot of rotation time because we get out at 11.40. So probably about 15 minutes. I'll rotate you up here. So if you ha you're having problems, you can get help. But when you get back to the blue, just take your safety test. Make sure that gets done. Okay? All right. You're good to go. Let me stop this video.